One of the most common questions I'm asked on my channel is how do I get this microphone connected to that computer? It's a good question because this is an XLR microphone and uh, there is no real direct connection uh, or direct way that I can plug this microphone into a computer. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to focus on what cables I use and what hardware components I have in between the microphone and the computer to make it all work. If that's something that interests you, stick around. So previously I did a video called how to remove background noise and get studio quality sound. And in it, I go over not only the hardware that I'm using here today, but also uh, the various settings with that hardware uh, and, and what they mean, what they do, how they affect the quality of your audio. I'm not gonna talk about that here. So uh, if you're interested in that, I'm gonna link to that video below. But what I am gonna focus on today is again, the cables I'm using, how they connect uh, the various hardware pieces. I'm also gonna show you my current uh, knob settings and button settings for the various hardware. So if you like the way this sounds, uh, or you want a baseline, if you kind of like it, but and you want to do better, you can see what my settings are and then make adjustments from there. Of course, whether they uh, are good for you or not is going to depend on your environment versus my environment. So keep that in mind. I'm also going to show you my software settings. So how I have this configured, I use Windows. So in Windows 10, how I have the audio device uh, configured uh, the various settings and sliders and how I use it in Adobe Premiere Pro, which is what I use for voiceover work. So first things first, I use an XLR cable uh, to connect to the microphone and that XLR cable is male on one side and female on the other. The female side is what I use to connect to the Shure SM7B microphone and the male side connects to the back of my DBX286S. All right, so now I have my Shure SM7B connected to my DBX286S, and I still need a way to get it into the computer, and there's really no direct way to do that uh, from the D DBX286S. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect the output of that DBX286S into an audio interface, and the audio interface that I'm using is the Focusrite 2i4. So I'm using a quarter-inch TRS cable, and I'm plugging that into the output of the DBX286S, and the other end, which is also going to be a male quarter inch uh, TRS cable, we're going to plug into the left channel of the Focusrite 2i4. And the reason why we're using a quarter inch on both ends is because this allows us to bypass the preamplifier on the Focusrite 2i4. We already have a preamplifier on the DBX286S, and so there's no, uh, no reason to use two of them. So that's a little pro tip for you. Now, once everything's plugged into the Focusrite, I can use a USB cable to connect the Focusrite to my computer, and that's my hardware signal chain. Now, because the DBX286S does not have a power switch, uh, the last connection I'm going to make actually is the power supply, or actually the power cable. There's no supply. So we're going to add power to it last, uh, and I think that's the safest and best way to do it, and we're good to go. All right, with the hardware connections behind us, we're now going to take a look at how I have the various knobs set. So let's take a closer look at these. Looking at the mic preamp section of my DBX286S, you'll see that I have the gain set to plus 60 dB. I need 59 dB just to drive the uh, Shure SM7B, and that's why I have it set so high. I have phantom power disabled. I have 80 hertz high pass disabled as well and process bypassed is disabled, which means that the rest of the knobs to the right here are enabled. With regard to the compressor settings, I have the drive set to 4.5 and the density set to 1.5. The de frequency is set to 2.5 kilohertz, which is right between the 1K and the 4K position. And the threshold is set to three. Under the enhancer control, I have the low frequency detail set to three and the high frequency detail set to one tick above two. For the expander gate, I have my threshold set to minus 30 and my ratio set to two to one. And finally, for my output gain, I have that set to plus 10 dB. Turning our attention to my focus right now, you can see that I have the gain set to about the 1030 position. I also have the line instrument switch set to line, no padding, and no phantom power. 
Audio settings wise, I'm going to go down here on uh, Windows 10 and right click on this little speaker icon and select recording devices. I'm using the Scarlett 2i4. That's my uh, default device. We'll look at the properties there. And as you can see, these are my settings. Nothing really interesting to report other than my level here is at about 86. That seems to be a good level for what I'm trying to achieve. And under the advanced tab, I have this set to two channels, 16 bit, 48 kilohertz. So as I stated before, I use Adobe Premiere Pro CC for my video editing work. And this is what the hardware or audio preferences look like. Uh, so for the device class, I have it set to MME. I'm using my Scarlett 2i4 as the default input. And then the rest, your mileage will vary depending on the speakers you're using. But in general, that is how my hardware is configured. A couple things to keep in mind, your audio levels should be coming in at minus 12 to minus 6 dB. So you should be peaking at minus 6 dB and really not going any higher than that. That'll give you some headroom so you can avoid clipping, which can make even the most expensive mics sound horrible. Finally, if you record something with this configuration, expect to hear sound coming out of the left speaker only. And that's as expected. Remember, we did plug in our quarter inch TRS cable into the left channel of the Focusrite 2i4. Do not adjust your television set. Any audio program worth its weight will give you an option to replicate one channel to the other. In Adobe Premiere, we can do that by going to the Effects tab, which you can access with Shift 7, and then do a search for left, L-E-F-T, and that'll give you a lot of options. It'll narrow things down, and I use fill right with left. And if you drag that onto your audio signal, you can replicate the sound to both channels. Anyway, that's all I got. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. I've left a link to everything I've talked about, the cables, the hardware, the software I use, in the video description below, and I'll see you next time.